Here's a secret. Your boat doesn't really ride on water. It flies on it. Most boaters think planing is about power, but it's really about pressure. Planing physics secrets every boat owner should know exposes how water turns into lift beneath your hull and how one wrong angle can steal 30% of your speed instantly. For boat owners, getting on plane is like entering a whole new world. Suddenly the noise quiets, resistance drops, and your boat surges forward effortlessly. But beneath that magic moment is pure physics. Planing is when your boat generates enough hydrodynamic lift to rise partly out of the water. You're no longer supported mostly by buoyancy. You're riding on speed-borne lift. Every hull design, engine setup, and trim angle is chasing that perfect balance where drag collapses and efficiency peaks. But here's the twist. Most owners don't really know why their boat planes the way it does. They just throttle up and hope for the best. And if you've ever wondered why your boat sometimes feels light and fast, and other times sluggish and stubborn, hit subscribe and tap the bell. We're about to decode the physics behind that feeling. Your boat operates in three distinct hydrodynamic states. Displacement, transition, and planing. At displacement speed, your hull is fully supported by buoyancy. The water pushes back against your boat's weight, smooth, stable, but slow. As you throttle up, the bow rises, the stern squats, and drag skyrockets. This is the transition phase, the hill your boat must climb before planing. It's also where most fuel is wasted. Once you push past that hump, dynamic lift kicks in. Water flowing under the hull generates upward pressure, reducing wetted surface area. The boat lifts, friction drops, and suddenly you're gliding. That's planing. Every boat has a planing threshold, typically between 12 and 18 knots for smaller hulls. The faster you reach it, the more efficient your ride. The slower, the more fuel you burn fighting drag. It's not about power, it's about understanding the invisible hand of lift working beneath you. Every pilot knows angle of attack determines lift, and boats follow the same rule. When your hull planes, water meets it at a shallow upward angle. The flatter that angle, usually 3 to 5 degrees, the more efficiently you ride. Too steep, and you're plowing. Too flat, and you lose lift and stability. Your trim and throttle control that angle. Trimming in pushes the bow down, helping you plane faster. Trimming out raises it, reducing wetted area once you're flying. But every hull has its sweet spot. A balance between lift and drag where the boat feels weightless yet planted. Think of it like this. You're not driving on water, you're managing an invisible wing. Get the angle right, and the boat levitates. Get it wrong, and the water turns to glue. The moment your hull starts to climb out of the water, you've entered hydrodynamic territory. Water rushing under your hull creates pressure differences, higher below, lower above. That pressure differential produces lift. The faster you go, the more lift is generated, but also the more sensitive your hull becomes to small changes in trim and weight. Flat-bottom boats plane easily because they have more surface area to generate lift. Deep V hulls need more speed because they displace more water before lifting. Here's the physics. Lift equals one half times a row times phi squared times a times CL, where a row is water density, V is velocity, A is wetted area, and CL is the lift coefficient, based on hull shape. You don't need the math, just know this. Speed multiplies lift exponentially. Double your speed, and lift increases fourfold. That's why once you're planing, even small throttle changes have huge effects. You're surfing on pressure, not floating on water. Here's the golden rule. Less hull in the water means less drag. As your boat gains speed, hydrodynamic lift pushes it higher, 
reducing the amount of hull actually touching the water. That's why planing hulls are designed with Chinese, strakes, and dead-rise angles. They manipulate how water separates under pressure. At low speeds, almost the entire hull is wet, high drag. At planing speeds, maybe just the last few feet aft are touching water, low drag. That's also why boats feel lighter once on plane. Your engine's no longer fighting water's full resistance. It's the difference between walking through waist-deep water and skipping across the surface. But too little wetted area can make your hull unstable, causing chine walk or porpoising. Every hull designer works to find that sweet spot. Minimal drag, maximum control. When your boat planes, there's a point along the bottom where hydrodynamic lift is concentrated. That's your center of pressure. If that point is too far aft, the bow rides high and the boat feels twitchy. Too far forward and you start plowing water again. The goal is to align the center of pressure with your center of gravity. Trim, weight placement and speed all move it back and forth like a seesaw. Ever notice how shifting a heavy cooler or a passenger changes how fast your boat planes? That's not imagination, it's physics. You're altering the balance between lift and gravity. Racers actually measure and tune this balance to the inch, because when lift and weight act perfectly in sync, the hull practically floats on air. That's the sweet glide every boater feels once in their life and never forgets. Planing isn't just about speed, it's about how your hull uses speed. Dead rise, the V-shape of your hull, decides how soft your ride is. A deep V cuts through waves but needs more speed to plane. Chinese, the sharp corners along the hull sides, deflect water outward, reducing drag and adding lift. Strakes, those long ridges running along the bottom, channel water flow, improving stability and helping the hull rise smoothly. Each design is a compromise between comfort, efficiency, and control. A flat bottom skiff jumps on plane in seconds, but slaps hard in chop. A deep V offshore hull feels buttery in waves, but needs power to climb. The sweet middle ground? Semi Vs and stepped hulls, they cheat physics by mixing both behaviors. So the next time someone brags about their ride quality, remember, it's not luck. It's geometry meeting physics at 40 knots. When your boat struggles to plane, it's often not your engine, it's your setup. Trim tabs and planing plates work by altering your hull's effective shape. Lower them and they act like wings, creating lift at the stern and forcing the bow down. Raise them and they free up the hull for speed. Tabs are lifesavers in rough seas, too. You can drop one side slightly to level the boat or both to help heavy loads plane faster. Physics-wise, they increase the effective surface area producing lift at the cost of a little drag. It's a trade every smart boater makes gladly when the alternative is wallowing like a bathtub. If your boat struggles to get on plane, don't reach for a bigger prop just yet. Reach for your tabs they might be worth 50 extra horsepower in the right hands. That awkward moment when your bow's high, visibility low, and your passengers are holding their drinks in fear. That's the transition zone. Here's what's happening. As speed increases, lift starts to build aft. The bow rises as the stern digs in, increasing drag dramatically. Your engine's working hardest here. The key is managing throttle and trim together. Keep the trim down until you feel the bow break over. That moment when resistance suddenly vanishes and the boat flattens. Then trim out slightly to maintain efficient running angle. Too much throttle too fast? You'll just waste energy and fuel. Too little? And you'll stay stuck in displacement purgatory. This isn't brute force, it's timing. Planing is a conversation with the water and patience wins every time. Load your boat wrong and you're fighting physics blindfolded. 
Too much aft weight and your boat struggles to lift its stern. Too much forward and it plows endlessly. Even small shifts matter. 200 pounds in the wrong place can change your trim angle by several degrees. Heavier loads also increase the planing threshold. More weight means you must displace more water before lift can overcome gravity. That's why a lightly loaded hull jumps up instantly, while a full fishing rig groans before breaking free. The fix is simple. Balance your load along the longitudinal axis, keeping heavy items low and central. This helps your center of gravity align with the planing surface, letting lift do its work efficiently. Smart loading equals smart planing and it's completely free horsepower. Porpoising, that rhythmic bounce, is planing's dark side. It happens when lift moves too far aft, creating an unstable feedback loop between hull and water. As the bow rises, lift shifts back, dropping the stern. When the bow falls, lift moves forward, pushing it back up. The cycle repeats. Solutions? Trim in slightly, move some weight forward or lower trim tabs. All three bring the center of lift forward, restoring equilibrium. Porpoising is physics trying to tell you something, that your center of gravity and center of pressure are out of sync. Ignore it, and you're not just uncomfortable, you're wasting performance and risking control. Every planing hull fights one enemy, drag. At low speeds, it's mostly form drag from pushing water aside. At planing speeds, it becomes skin friction, resistance over the wetted area. Here's where physics plays its trick. As lift increases, wetted area decreases, but friction per square inch increases because pressure is concentrated. That's why boats reach a speed plateau where more throttle gives minimal gain. You've hit the balance point between lift and drag. Clean hulls, polished props, and proper trim can all shift that plateau higher. Even a thin film of marine growth can reduce top speed by 10%. In other words, planing efficiency is part hydrodynamics, part housekeeping. Ever notice those spray rails or sharp Chinese flinging sheets of water outward? They're not just for show, they're part of the lift system. By deflecting water and creating aerated flow under the hull, spray reduces wetted area and drag. The trapped air forms a micro cushion that supports part of the hull, a mild version of what hydrofoils do. This air entrapment effect is what makes stepped hulls so fast. Each step introduces fresh air under the boat, breaking suction and boosting lift. You're not just riding on water anymore, you're riding partly on air. It's physics with flair. If planing is gliding, hydrofoils are flying. Foils lift the hull completely out of the water, eliminating almost all drag. The same lift equation applies, but now the wing is underwater. That's why a 90 horsepower foil boat can outrun a 150 horsepower planing hull. It's pure efficiency, nearly 70% drag reduction. The catch? Stability and cost. Foils require precise balance and control systems, but they prove the ultimate point. The less hull touching water, the faster and smoother the ride. Hydrofoils are planing perfected, the logical next step in the quest for zero drag. Modern boats are learning to think. Active hull systems use sensors to adjust tabs, ballast and trim automatically to maintain optimal planing attitude. Yamaha's Helmmaster, Volvo's automatic trim assist and Mercury's active trim constantly monitor speed, load and pitch. They're like autopilot for lift, applying micro-adjustments every second to keep your boat perfectly balanced. As AI and automation evolve, planing physics won't disappear, it'll just go digital. The captain's intuition will meet the computer's precision, and planning will become effortless perfection. Planning isn't just speed, 
It's science at its most thrilling. It's the moment your boat breaks free of gravity's grip and starts surfing on pressure and motion. Every time you feel your hull rise, you're feeling physics doing its best work. Once you understand how planing really works, lift, drag, and balance, you'll never just throttle up again. You'll fly smart. If this video helped you see your boat differently, hit subscribe, tap the bell, and drop a comment with your boat's planing speed. I read everyone. Until next time, keep your trim steady, your hull clean, and your planing smooth.